On this week's show, the Georgia Southern Eagles 0-7 on the football season look to break that streak at home as they have Georgia State coming to call. We'll preview that and give you a look at the Georgia Southern basketball team as they hit the hardwood for the first time this season. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, once again, the Eagles go on the road and they end up losing, and now they're 0-7 on the season. We did see them try a few different things. They go under center uh, quite a bit, mainly with Cato Brown. Uh, Shy Wirtz and Cato Brown splitting time at quarterback. We don't know if that's Shy uh, still being a little banged up from missing the week before or if that's what they're just going to do the rest of the way. Defensively, though, the same old, same old, especially in the first half. Georgia Southern makes a good play on offense, scores a touchdown. The defense gives up a big score. Georgia Southern goes down and kicks a field goal. The defense gives up a big score. Then you're in a hole 28-10, never could get out of it. Your thoughts on uh, briefly this past week? Yeah, I think there definitely were some positives to take out of this, uh, uh, assuming or considering some of the scores that have been put up by opposing offenses and how, uh, how likely Troy is to be able to go off on some people. Yeah, they got their big plays, but maybe uh, maybe the final total wasn't quite as much as some people thought that it might be. So I think that Georgia Southern's defense, especially in the second half, did a pretty good job of containing Troy. Then again, you don't know how much they were easing off the gas, looking forward to other games on the schedule, a possible uh, run of the conference championship. And then when you look at the Georgia Southern offense, the first uh, drive of the day goes right down the field, answers a quick touchdown by Troy, one of their best drives of the season. They have another long, sustained scoring drive later in the first half, so definitely put some things together, but as has been the case all season, the consistency just wasn't there. Like you said, when the offense does something, the defense gives it right back up, and when the when the defense maybe makes a play, the offense's ability to put a drive together ran out. So once again, the Eagles still searching, trying to put some form of consistency on the field. You've seen a little bit at times throughout the season. It has yet to all show up at once. Hopefully they can find it, but as of right now, still just a team searching for an identity, searching for any sort of uh, light in a season that's quickly becoming a loss for them. Not to harp on the under center thing, but it was – Notably, that you know that they did something like that. It was kind of strange that it happened right after Coach Summers was gone, and he had mentioned throughout the year that they've discussed going under center, but have never really done it too much. Now this game, they do it quite a bit, and it had some, you know, mixed results. It wasn't every time they went under center they made a good play, but there were some, you know, notable with uh, L.A. Rams being making some pretty good plays. Do you think that that's the direction that they're heading in, or do you think it's still going to be 50-50 or, or split, you know, 60-40 or something like that throughout the rest of the year? Well, I think they're going to continue to practice it, maybe practice it more, maybe use it more if it continues to work. But, you know, you've got these two different ways to run the offense, and you can say what you want about Coach Summers, what he was or wasn't able to do while here. I'd like to think that he or any other coach on this staff if it was apparent that the only way to move the ball and score points was to be under center, that's how they would have been. And looking back at the Troy game, yes, they did have some very good plays. While under center certainly looked familiar, looked like a Georgia Southern team that many people are used to. But when you look at the stats, the plays from shotgun actually gained more per play than the ones under center. Then again, you look at the uh, situations they were used. Short yardage, which is where the Eagles want to be. I credit that more than anything for the increased offensive production being able to get into third and short. They were in a lot of third and longs. That's what killed the drives when they were able to set themselves up for third and short. That's when they were able to keep things going, put points on the board. All right, well, this week they've got Georgia State coming in. Georgia State 4-3 and three on the season. The Eagles 0-7. If you would have said that, you know, uh, four years ago, I don't think anybody would have believed that that would be where we are now. They thought you had it mixed up, and <laughs> they would have struggled to believe that Georgia Southern was even 
four and three. That's that's exactly right. But that is the case. Georgia State comes in four and three after a nationally televised game in which they picked up a win against South Alabama. Maybe not the most uh, exciting victory in the world, but they're four and three and they're still in the middle of the pack uh, in in the league right now. Your thoughts on the Eagles playing Georgia State? Well, I think this might come at the right time for Georgia Southern. The loss last week guarantees that there will be no postseason for them for a second consecutive year. Even with the coaching change and some new energy, it's kind of easy to to get down when you know that your fate is sealed. But then you look and you've got an in-state team, a team that's beaten you twice in a row, maybe does a little something to fire the team up. But the biggest thing for the Eagles is they need to stay focused on the task at hand, which isn't so much Georgia State so much as it is fixing all the mistakes that have been happening, those lapses, the lack of consistency. If they can do that, Georgia State, while a four-win team right now, They've shown that they can have bad days. They've shown that they can be beaten by teams probably without even Georgia Southern's level of talent. So the biggest thing for the Eagles is to be the best Eagles they can be. If they can do that, I think this game's a whole lot closer than people might think just looking at the records. All right. Well, we had a chance to talk with head coach Chad Lunsford and a few of the Eagle players about the matchup with the Panthers. Uh, You know, it's always been a chip on my shoulder since my freshman year and um, ready to come to play this year. Uh, lead the D-line the best way as I can to be um, prepared for this game. Logan, it seems like a lot of times what's happened with this team is when the offense has made a big play or scored a touchdown, Mm -hmm. boom, the other team hits on a one or two play touchdown drive. I know you guys seemed in the second half to be a little bit better. How do you prevent that from happening? Uh, Practice, uh, just cut out on the the big plays, you know, that's what hurt us in like in the long run. It's just other opposing teams hit big plays and it's we get put in a hole and we'll come out the second half, but you know, it's hard to fight back when you you know, basically spotting points to the opposing team. So that's our biggest uh goal this week is to cut out the big plays and cut out the mistakes. Um just, you know, players policing, you know, each other. The coaches can't um they can't have eyes on, you know, a hundred guys. So it's gonna be up to the players to police each other and coach them up for, um, as well with the coaches. I think we'll both get a taste of uh, both under center and in the gun. I think that it just happened to fall into place like that, uh, how coach wanted to call the plays and just, you know, it's our job just to execute whatever he gives us. But I don't think there's any like specifics as to why he may have been in the gun more if, or if I was under center. Do you feel more comfortable in one or the other? Uh, I think I do. I do well in both, but I have no preference really. Being my first year here, it's a new rivalry for me, but talking to the seniors and being close with them, you know, I can tell how much it means to them. And so I think that just kind of flows through everyone else. And we want to definitely work our hardest to get those dubs for those guys and, you know, send them off on a high note the best way we can. Um, I think you'll see, you know, more under center package stuff. Um, you know, obviously, you don't want to talk too much about what you're doing um, as far as, you know, for the next opponent and all that. But uh, we had some success, so it's some, definitely something we can build off of. Chad, we had mainly Cato under center and Shy almost strictly in shotgun. Is that, is that the, do they feel more comfortable doing that? Is that why you did that? Or was there a, a, a reason for that? No, um, I think both guys can do it. Um, Cato has some experience, more experience at it. Um, but, but we feel good about both guys. We feel like we can put both in the gun and both under center. Do you plan on keeping rotating both of them? Uh, we will play both. Uh, Shy is our starter, um, but we will get Cato involved. The, the great thing is, and, and you know, we preached to our kids last uh, last week that this was a new season, and so we're looking at this as game two. And um, you know, obviously, everybody knows what this season is right now with with being 0 and 7. But we're going to talk about it like it's game two. And there's no reason why we can't get fired up and ready to roll against Georgia State. And then um, obviously the next week's game, you know. But don't really want to talk about that yet. I mean, it's this this week, and you know, the whole focus right now is to get our guys swagger back, get us back to playing Georgia Southern football. And it, this is a great week to start against Georgia State. I, I think it really started great. The, the thing that I really noticed when before we played them the first time is there was always that rumbling, always that talk about when Georgia, Georgia Southern would play Georgia State. And, uh, you know, so I think a lot of that stuff had already started to build. And then, obviously, the first, first time we played them, uh, we got the best of them. And then the last two times, they've gotten us. And uh, 
the biggest thing that I think happens is is a lot of these kids know each other. You know, there are a lot of played together in high school or played against each other in high school. So there's a lot of there's a lot more invested in it. And uh, so, you know, it, again, I think it, it's a it's a good thing. And uh, I think it's something that our kids will be really excited about this week. And I, I think you'll see a fired up team. Hey, Ms. Thompson, everything's fine. It's going to be no problem. I'll have you done in a few minutes. My name is Paisley Nordhaus, part owner of Complete Car Care, and I want you to come see me. Mike, this is the time of the show where we usually give a little bit of a prediction how we think the game will come out. As far as the bookmakers in Vegas, Georgia Southern, about a four point underdog. Hard to believe. I think Georgia Southern's only game they were favored in was New Hampshire. Aside from that, they've been the underdog every week. This being no exception, your thoughts on how you see this one playing out? Well, they're, they're definitely an underdog. They have every reason to be. Haven't won a game so far this season. Haven't really been in a position to win a game this season. Uh, you've got Georgia State coming in. They would love nothing more than to rub this in the Eagles' face. It also gets them one win closer to bowl eligibility. They'd love that even more to go bowling while their in-state uh, uh, partners from Georgia Southern stay home. I think that uh, this is a perfect time for the Eagles to put their foot in the ground, hold their ground, finally put something together. And you see it in these rivalry games. A lot of times it doesn't make sense when upsets happen, when things just come out of nowhere. The team that isn't supposed to have a chance plays like champions for a day. I think this is the Eagles' day. I think they put it all together. They're going to have to have a great uh, job done by the secondary, the pass defense, with a very good Georgia State passing attack. I think, though, that they challenge themselves. They rise to that challenge. The offense finds some points. They walk away with an upset victory. Can't believe I'm saying upset <laughs> victory, but they slow down the offense. Their offense clicks. They win this one 24-17. I've got 24-21. to 21. I think the Eagles are going to win this one by a field goal. I agree with you. The secondary is going to half their hands full because we know with Manning and, and uh, Penny, uh, Penny Hart, Hart uh, out there catching passes, they're going to have their hands full. If they can slow them down a little bit and the offense continues to make a little bit of an improvement and they're at home, should be a beautiful day, hopefully a good crowd on hand. And the Eagles, I think, will pick up their first win of the season as well. All right, moving on. We've got basketball, Mike. Believe it or not, the Eagles on the hardwood Wednesday night as they get ready for the season. We're going to do a little more in-depth preview later on uh, in, in later shows, but just briefly your thoughts on Georgia Southern coming back this season. I think they were picked fourth in the preseason polls. Fourth in the uh, in the Sunbelt preseason poll. Uh, four teams got first place votes. They were not one of those teams, so Maybe you don't want to call it disrespect. They've got to go prove that they belong there, but maybe a little chip on their shoulder heading into this season, seeing as how they were uh, seated higher than that in the tournament last season, seeing as how for the second consecutive year, they bring 90 plus percent of their scoring and minutes back. And we'll finally be able to have some new thoughts about Georgia Southern basketball. For the last couple of years, we talked about how young this team was starting almost all freshmen and sophomores two years ago, went through some growing pains, a learning curve last year. They showed flashes of brilliance, stumbled a little down the stretch, but this year they get them all back. They're all experienced. They all have playing time. And most importantly, at least going through the preseason, they're all healthy. So I think this is a dangerous team that can really make some noise. With Led by the three amigos of Tukey Brown, Mike Hughes, and Ike Smith, I would imagine big things are, uh, you're thinking about big things from the Eagles this season. All right, well, before we go, a couple other sports, uh, soccer, men and women. Uh, the volleyball team, and how about the golf? They go down to Hawaii. We both wanted to go with them. We could have seen a record-breaking performance had we been able to go. Yeah, Stephen Fisk, as much as we sang his praises a couple of weeks ago when he ran away with the individual title up in Atlanta as Georgia Southern won a tournament, the team not quite as fortunate out in Hawaii. They struggled at times, but Stephen Fisk on his game once again in the second round, he becomes the 13th player ever to shoot 60 in a collegiate event. And that's on a par 72 course. That's on a par 70 where right. maybe it's not quite as impressive. Although being a golfer and you being a golfer, <laughs> 60 is impressive if I reach it anytime. 80 is impressive, Mike. 15th hole or so. 
But uh, a great job there by Fisk. He's currently ranked fourth in the country among all individual male collegiate golfers. So a lot to look forward to as the uh, the golf teams, men's and women's respectively, roll into that winter break. All right, and as for the soccer teams, I know the women are starting the postseason and the guys still have a little bit to go and, and briefly volleyball as well. Yeah, the women have a tough road ahead. They drop their conference uh, regular season finale 5 nothing against Troy. They've got to go right back against the Trojans in the first round of the women's conference tournament. Uh, as for the guys, they've got a, a couple games left on the schedule, or I'm sorry, one game left on the schedule. They've got Appalachian State. They need this one right now. They're in third place. A win could get them as high as second if things go right and they win a tiebreaker that they currently hold with Coastal Carolina. If not, they could be in a play-in game situation. I know this is a very talented team. They probably want one or two of those games back. This is a team good enough to win it, but now they've got to think about putting themselves in the best possible position to win it. You can do that with a win and hopefully getting a better seed than you currently sit in. And as for volleyball, another tough weekend on the road for the Eagles. They sit at 2-7 and seven in conference play, a trip to 11-1. and one. Coastal Carolina coming up. Things get a little easier in the final three matches of the year, but they need to do something to, to get themselves a, a decent enough seed to maybe have a, a matchup that they can do something with in the early rounds of the conference tournament. All right. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. We thank you for joining us and hope to see you again next week.